All right, welcome to another exciting class. And um, this topic for today would be Concord. I know you are familiar with it also. Uh, I strongly believe you have a background knowledge to what Concord is. Okay? If I start to ask you questions, I know even as you are seated in your house or your rooms or wherever you are watching this webinar from, you would most likely say that a Concord shows the agreement between the subject of the sentence and, of course, the verb in that sentence. Um, we cannot just say that. You know, sometimes when you read the definition of a topic, it becomes so difficult that you are better off not knowing the topic. Do you understand what I'm driving at? So, what we are trying to make it as simplified as possible. If we say something shows agreement, yes, Concord, you will most likely see is an agreement between the subject and verb in a sentence. If you don't know what subject means and you don't know what a verb means, you might need to go and you know familiarize yourself with the singular topic themselves. You familiarize yourself with what we call subject. Then you try to know what a verb is. Then you come back to this video and play again. Okay? But of course, once you know that you have a knowledge of subject of a sentence and verb of a sentence, then you can go on. Now, what is the subject of a sentence? The subject of a sentence is that part of the sentence that shows the person performing the action. The verb is that part of the sentence that shows the action that has been performed. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to give you a simple example that explains agreement or that explains subject and verb together. Then we're not going to the agreement. All right, now look at this. When I say, John loves to cook, women are Lovely creatures. Look at it. You will see that this example here is the verb. This example here is the verb. Though one is a direct verb, the second is it's not a direct verb. It's not even something that is tangible. It's not a tangible verb. Okay, because it does not show a direct action. But here, Loves to what? Okay? You can see yam. Okay? Now look at this. John loves to cook yam. Look at this John. is one person. Women are many. Or more than one. So in that case, the word we use to explain it in English language is when something is one, we say it's a singular singular. When it's many, it says what? Plural. Now, come back to the expression. Who is performing the action of loving to cook here? Who? John. So John here is the subject. Loves here is the verb. Okay? And then we have young is the object. But we're not concerned about that. Women are lovely creatures. Look at this. Women, plural. Okay? A is a verb. Plural verb of is. That's the plural of is. Is. A. Do you get that? Okay, so our focus now is on how this subject and this object, how the two of them go together such that our expression will be grammatical. Such that if a much more advanced environment we examine our expression under that environment we see that okay what i've said is correct or what i've said is not correct so the relationship between these two is what we are driving at under concord so to further explain it look at this she dances more than her sister okay He loves, 
people dislike is dance slash dances. He loves slash love white shoes. Pair of shoes. Number three. Now look up to this piece. She dances slash dances more than her sister. You see this she is the one that is about to perform an action, dance. So we don't know whether it is dance we want to pick or dances. Look at this E, is about to perform an action, to love. We don't know whether it is loves or love. They, they are about to perform an action, pray. Okay? We don't know, is it pray or praise? What we determine the one we are going to pick in these two is the way this one looks like. If this one is singular, the verb that we pick out of these two must be singular. So, Mr. Femi, how do I know the singular verb? To be candid with you, the singular verb is telling you that I'm present here, oh, I'm waiting for you, oh, pick me. And then you are like, where are you? How do I know that you are the singular verb? And he's saying, oh, look at me now, look at me. I already show you that I'm singular. How? There is S. I have S at the back of my word. That S is telling you I'm singular. It's not possible, job. Let's look at the second example. Say, so, okay. E. Oh, there are two examples in here. Which one am I going to pick? And first check. This E, is it singular or plural? So, e is one person, right? Okay, singular. So uh, you have to pick the singular verb. Oh, how am I going to pick the singular verb? And here, yeah, pick me, pick me. How do I know you? I already have S at the back of me telling you I'm single. Ah, oh, it does not work that way, though. Let's come to this place. Day. When we say day, are we talking about one person? No, more than one. Is that not so? So we come here, pray, praise. Oh, there are two examples of verbs there. Which one do I pick? You say, ah, pick me, pick me, I'm here. Say, how do I know that you are the one I'm to pick? You say, ah, I've already shown you that I'm not singular. You know, there is plural, so me, I'm not singular. What do you mean? There is no S at the back of me to show that I'm singular. I am plural. And then you now look at it. That, oh, truly, when you have a subject that wants to perform the action, if the subject is singular, one, then the verb must be singular. How do you identify a singular verb? Singular verb always have S at the back. Saying the word, I'm singular. Plural verbs, they don't have to say the word, I'm not singular, I'm plural. E, singular. When you look here, singular verbs always carry S to show you that they are singular. They are always saying it, I'm singular. But this one here, love, is plural. It does not carry. So, E is singular. We we'll simply say that word. She dances more than her sister. That's the correct thing. You don't come out and say, ah, she dan that girl can dance. And in fact, I can even say that she dances more than her sister. Hey! She will not stop dancing. Okay, so, it is she dances more than her sister. Then look at this. He loves. We are using the one with S because we are showing that this person that wants to perform the action is one person, singular. But if the person is more than one, we will pick the one that does not have S. So look at it. She dances more than her sister. He loves white pair of shoes. They pray. Not you can't say they praise they know. Why? This S is for singular. You can't use it here because they is plural. So they pray they you get that. So, having laid this foundation, I want us to proceed to picking one or two examples on the board. Picking one or two examples on the board and using it to explain the topic proper. Okay, so. To have short notes written, you can simply say Concord is subject and verb agreement. 
okay the general rule of concord says that a singular subject takes a singular verb to a plural subject takes a plural verb. Okay? Having said this, how to differentiate between singular and plural subjects slash verbs. Okay? Take notes of the following classifications. Alright, look at this side. Singular subjects takes singular subjects show performer of action okay as one person singular okay i e e she hi it is singular verb show s at the back of the word. I did loves sings. Dances. Okay? Therefore, we can say loves me. She hates me. Okay? Plural subjects takes plural verb. Okay. Have plural verbs show perform subject rather. Show performer of an action. So we can say put you here. So we can say 
that's let's take an example from here we love him okay they where is it it's general that this is the main rule. If you don't understand this rule, every other thing will be the same under this topic. It's just going, it will not make sense to you. Okay, so now, the exception. Exceptions exist to this rule. When we say exception, it means there are sometimes we make some statements. Are you getting what I'm driving at? That statement might be singular, might have a singular subject, but if you take a plural thing. I get what I'm saying. Sometimes you might have a plural subject that will take singular verb. They are just exceptional like that. When we say there's an exception, it means it will not follow this general rule. Normally, the general rule says that singular subjects must carry singular verb. Then plural subjects must carry plural verb. That's the rule. Do you get that? But we have some exception. Okay? And you have you and I exception. Okay, look at this. I dash you. You dash me. Look at this. When you say I, you are talking about one person. I, in the previous class, I gave you a chart that has this format subject, object. And I told you that you and you can be written like this. So when you have I, you can use this I to talk about one person. You can use this you to address one person also. For instance, if I come to someone and I say, you are my friend. That's one person. Do you get it? But if you look at the verb that always goes with this you, when you're talking about one person, the verb is always plural. Whether it is singular or plural, whenever you use you, your verb must be plural. But that is singular. Of course, I cannot be plural. The verb is must be plural. Do you get that? So, which one is now the verb to use here? Whenever we use I or we say hi in a sentence, and that I is performing an action, or we use you as a singular and it's performing an action, the exception says I is to take plural verb, you is also to take what? Plural verb. That is why you see I. Normally, it's supposed to be, I love you. But have you heard anybody say that before? Say, I love you. No. It is, I love you. Why? That is because this I is an exception to this general rule. It belongs to the category of personal pronouns. Eh? I think I mentioned this in one of the classes we've had, that I is a personal pronoun. It belongs to the category of pronouns that are singular. But they behave as though they are what? Plurals. Do you understand that? Alright, so this is the explanation for that. I told you when we come on that point called, I'll break it down. So this I will not be loves. It will be I love you. You will not be you hates me. That's why you find that this you is one person. You won't say you hates me. Okay? It's the word you hate me. This will be wrong. So this Two are exceptions to this general word rule. Now we have some other rules. Okay, some of them pose as exceptions also, uh, but the exceptions are not really glaring as much as these two. I will go further to itemize them as per you. Okay? Did I number? Yes, I did. Okay, so this is this is going to be this is number two. Then this should be number three now. Okay? Let's pick the A N D compound. Okay, now A N D, which is and, is a coordinating conjunction. It links, okay, it links two sides to the other. Okay, sometimes we use it to 
used to link a list, okay, or varieties. For instance, this is my bag. kind of thing. Okay? For instance, when you say my father and mother dash around is ah, which option are we picking? Are we picking my father and mother is around? Or are we picking my father and mother are around? Which one are we picking? To be candid with you, if you go into the exam and you say my father and mother is around, telling you, you will walk you out of that exam hall and you go and meet your father and your mother. Okay? Because my father and mother, they are the subject here, about to perform an action. Are we together? That action is an indirect action do, you have is, ah. By virtue of saying my father, one person, and mother, another person, combined, that is already two, making what? Plural. So if we have plural subjects from the first rule, okay, then our answer must be what? Plural. Between is and ah, which one is plural? Ah, right? Therefore, ah is the correct answer. So you have my father, are around. So what we are looking at under the AND concrete is how we use AND to join two subjects and pick the correct verb that follows or that agrees with it. So let us go to that side so that I can explain a little detail about the AND. Okay? So what we have over here, if we are together, what we have over here is the rule, the AND rule. The AND rule suggests that whenever two independent subjects Remember two independent subjects are linked by hand. A plural verb is to be used. However, when used to link two subjects and they refer to one thing or person a singular verb must be used are we together now? Now look at it. There are two sides to this rule. The first one says, when you link two things together, and those two things are independent of each other. For instance, when you say a boy and a girl. Okay? The boy and the girl dash in the classroom. What we have is are in the classroom. Because the boy is different from a girl. 
so they are independent. But when you have two expressions, two subjects that is used to link or refer to one thing, are you getting what I'm driving at? That one thing, because of the fact that it is singular, it will take a singular verb. So, come to this side, when I say the bar and clothes is slash up in the log what you have here is what? Ah, why? Bar one and plus clothes one together it gives you what? Two. And that two attracts plural variable ah. Now come to this side, when I now say the father and mother of the boy dash around was where? This is a past statement, statement that happened in the past. So we are looking for the correct past verb. Is it a singular verb or the plural past verb? Singular past, plural past. Which one? The father, a different man, a man, and mother, a woman, of the boy, dash around. There are two. Therefore, you see what? Where around. Do you understand that? Now look at this part. When you now have the principal, and father of the boy, Dash with is slash up the pastor and mentor of the parish dash on his way. On the way is up. Are we together? Now, you see that when I came here, I said the bag and clothes. Dash in the locker. The bag, different. When you hear bag, you know it's different from clothes. So those are independent things. The father and mother, independent. There is no, you can't be confused about it. Do you get that? Now, but when you now come here and say the principal and father, okay, this simply means that the principal is still the father of the boy. If we're talking about two different people here, we would have said the principal and the father of the boy. But this is a case where the principal is both the father of the boy and also the principal in the school. If, the, if your father were a principal, the father would take you to the school, most likely. So in such a case, the principal and father of the boy dash waiting. So what we have there is what is waiting for the same person. And that's the second rule. Okay? The pastor and mentor of the parish dash on the way. So this pastor, okay, and mentor of the parish dash on the way. The answer is what is, not a. But I said the pastor and the mentor, okay, of the parish, then our answer would have been a. Because we use definite article to show that this is a definitely different person. This one is also a definitely different person. Do you get that? Therefore, is will be the correct answer to that. So we'll be stopping here for now. In the next class, we'll continue on this topic.